Okay, here goes the fun part. And unfortunately, because we've been going for the time that we've been going, I think this is going to get cut down short. But this is going to be a blast to me because I know that Terrence hasn't hasn't read this shit yet. Tavian, I know that you haven't read this shit yet either. You don't know shit. You haven't read this shit yet. Huh, this is this is going to be a blast because I was sitting in my office today working at my corporate job, being <laughs> Jeremy Joyner, the profession, the professional. Damn, <laughs> I'm about halfway slow. Uh, and I, I, I mean, when I tell y'all, I was just nothing short of befuddled by this article and disgusting, to be quite frank, no pun intended. It, it, it really was just... One of the nastiest things that I've seen in my life. One of the nastiest things that I've seen in my life. And my nose is a bit stuffy, so bear with me. Uh-oh. Every excuse in case you <laughs> fuck up. <really. laughs> um, I've read this article one and a half times so far. Um, so hopefully. Uh, How long is it? Significantly long. But we'll, uh, I'll try and we'll read, we'll read a couple paragraphs. But this is this is the article. Like it, it it's significant. It's significant. Yeah, I mean, I don't think we read it. <laughs> and what I want y'all to do, Tavian and Terrence, is I would just like for y'all to stop me when y'all hear some bullshit and just give me feedback and just let me know when I can keep reading. Okay. Would you like to read along and help me if I fuck up on a word? Have, have you sent us the article? <laughs> I'm assuming. Yes. Um, now this article was again produced on or published, excuse me, um, on the athletic by Joe person and Diana Rossini or Diana Rossini, excuse me. Um, and again, it released earlier today, Wednesday, December the 6th. <clears throat> so here we go. Okay. Um, Dave here we Tem- go. Yeah, nah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> My nigga be in his bag. Hey, they need to give him the MVP, but we he ain't. Gonna get it, his bag. It's, it's a it's a Panthers podcast. Why is trying to make me pay a dollar? Pay a dollar because you gotta have a. You, oh yeah, y'all. Never mind. I, I got it. Don't yeah, worry. Yeah, yeah, you got that shit. You're giving me <laughs> pay the same a dollar, thing. dude. It's a dollar a month. Man, fuck the fuck athletic. Fuck the athletic. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> With all due respect, FPFO only. Fair enough. Um, here we go. Quote: Dave Tepper thought he nailed it this time. After firing Matt, <laughs> it seemed like he did it. He just thought he nailed it, and the bitch just got fired last year in the middle of the season. Ain't no way he thought that. <laughs> after after firing Matt Rule in October 2022, the Carolina Panthers owner was determined to get his second head coaching hire right. Tepper, the hedge fund billionaire who bought the team in 2018, ran a more thorough search and looking for Rule's successor. Focusing on coaches uh, with offensive backgrounds after missing out, or excuse me, after missing on what he called a CEO coach, quote unquote, in rule. Uh, after interviewing nine candidates, wait, wait, I don't even understand. Oh, what does that mean? <laughs> that means that, mean that bitch ass nigga was making all the calls on player personnel. Yes, that's what that that's, means. Yes, and that's what I was trying to tell Terrence the whole time. But because Scott Fitter has fucked this season completely, he has his argument, and that's why I apologized. <laughs> But that did tell me again that that nigga Matt Rule was making the calls in, in calls. As a first shots. time fucking head coach in the NFL, in the NFL, so just that didn't do dick. a bitch ass thing. But besides with Baylor, but cool. Um, did he get that program? Never mind. <laughs> 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 Continuing on, um, after interviewing nine candidates, Tepper decided on Frank Wright, the former Indianapolis Colts uh, coach and the starting quarterback. For the first game in Panthers history. Pause. That's that cute, cute ass shit that nigga's been trying to do all year. Who was the nine? Do you remember the nine? I don't remember all nine. I know Ben Johnson. I know. Ben Johnson didn't even come though, did he? The second one. He didn't come to the second one. He came to the first one. Uh, Ben Johnson. I, I don't know. Nigga. Steve Woods. Steve well, Woods. Well, I just that's find two. it hard to believe it was nine. I don't no, I remember. Think I, I, it was nine. Okay. It was loud for sure. Because did, they had niggas coming in left and right. Did they already? I believe Kellen Moore, right? Didn't they bring Kellen I don't Kellen know Moore if Kellen Moore interviewed or not yet. I don't know. Actually, I don't, I don't know. think he had the chance because that yeah. was only unemployed for like an hour. Yeah, it was very quick. Um. Okay, cool. Moving on. 
So after interviewing the nod, bringing in Frank Wright, okay, Tepper with a net worth of $20 billion gave Wright a four-year deal and provided him the resources to hire an all-star staff that would help develop a rookie quarterback. But halfway through Wright's first season, Tepper already was contemplating another coaching change. With number one overall pick Bryce Young struggling and the Panthers owning the league's worst record, Tepper warned Wright in early November he needed to see improvements on offense. We know that shit from Jay Glazer because every single bitch-ass week since October 31st, we seen that Frank Wright's seat was getting hotter and hotter. Um, Tepper had mortgaged the team's future to move up to draft Young. The rookie's development was uh, stagnant. Uh, under an avalanche of sacks and hits in the pocket. Out of the Panthers scored just 10 points with Reich again calling the plays and back-to-back losses against Dallas and Tennessee. Tepper fired him November 27th. The Panthers were 1-10 under Reich, whose tincture was the NFL's shortest in 45 years. <laughs> during the news conference, during the news conference the day after Reich's firing, Tepper declined to elaborate on his decision, telling reporters that could spe- they could speculate as to that, quote-unquote. Um, the offensive problems and Young's development doomed right, but there was a lot going on behind the scenes on Wright's staff, and this is where my cock gets aroused as just a, 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 a content creator, just in full transparency, because this is where shit gets kind of good and kind of juicy. Pause. Uh the athletics now this is and this is why I said y'all bitches because if y'all gonna do the shit that y'all was doing, then stand on business when Joe and Diana come talk to y'all. But cool, the athletics spoke to more than twenty uh, Panthers coaches, players, and other league sources. Uh, sources, excuse me, some of whom were <laughs> chill, 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 chill on me. I got too excited. Uh, of whom were granted. Uh, and, and pronounce that shit anonymity. Yeah, cool. <laughs> anonymity, so they can speak freely. Um, they painted a picture of dysfunction inside the Carolina Panthers' offices, with assistant coaches under undermining other coaches. As many went into self-preservation mode when it became clear Reich's days were numbered. Team sources described a quote a quote Hunger Games culture at Bank of America Stadium. Coaches said they believed other staff members were texting me. <laughs> nah, for <laughs> sure. Like, what the fuck? Like, nigga, so I'm, I'm reading this shit. I'm like, what, nigga? Cool. Uh, <laughs> no, no, <that's laughs> that shit is <laughs> sick as hell, nigga. That is sick, bro. Yeah. That is sick. If a coach brings me in onto this all-star style, quote, unquote, I, I, I'm not going to lie. I got to burn with the nigga. I got to burn with him. So that's why Josh McCown and Deuce got missing the way they did. Simple as that. Okay. Um, I'm going to just reread the shit. Team sources described the Hunger Games culture at Bank of America Stadium. Coaches said they believed other staff members were text messaging Tepper behind Reich's back about issues they saw with the team. In one instance, Judas, Judas. Nah, literally. In one instance, general manager Scott Fitterer and an offensive coach went to Tepper with a coaching suggestion for the quarterback. Pause. Scott Fitterer don't give no bitch ass coaching suggestions. You can't even do your fucking job properly. Damn, I'm drooling this shit. shit. (laughs) I'm drooling this shit, but that shit is just like, that shit is outrageous. Is that juicy, bro? Yeah, bro, because like, no cap. Pause, nigga. That shit was wild as hell. Pause, and I said, yeah, too. Damn, nigga. Pause. I might need to edit that. I mean, God damn. Um, I'll only read a couple more paragraphs. If you want to see the full article and read the full article, pay the $1 a month. Um... Here we go for the quarterback. Cool. Quote, people just finger pointing, hoping they don't get exposed, said one assistant. Days before Thanksgiving with the team spiraling and Young getting pummeled. <laughs> that's such a fucking phenomenal adjective because that's exactly what he was doing. Um, is that right? That's an adjective or a verb? Yeah, it is. An adjective? Mm-hmm. Because that's something that happens to a now. I'm smart as fuck. <laughs> Tepper told Wright to fix, and this is this is why I say this is why I say this is why I say Dave Tepper got too much shit going on, nigga. You got too much dip on your chip. Days before Thanksgiving, after Young was getting pummeled, Tepper told Wright to fix the rookie's footwork. Fitter and others had told Tepper that Young's feet were the cause of some of the Panthers' protection issues. 
They believe Young wasn't dropping back deep enough on his pass sets. That's what we spoke about earlier. My thing is, that shouldn't have been coming from no other coach but the quarterback coach. But Josh McCown. No other coach but Josh McCown. Because I've seen a crazy theory that it was bro, Capers, the fucking... uh, Don Capers? No, 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 not Capers. What's bro name? James uh, Kempman, the offensive line coach. i seen a theory that it was him just by process of elimination. And motherfucker, you got some nerve. Yeah, of course, because you're trying to save your fucking job because your offensive line look like bullshit. So, of course, I'm going to put it on the quarterback, even though niggas is getting in the backfield like that. Right. C- bitch. Bitch shit. Because I was about to say, because I know I went on my rant about all the coaches needing to be fired. But before Josh McCown was hired, when he was doing his little podcast for the underdog fantasy people and he was breaking down quarterback film. I thought the motherfucker did a phenomenal job breaking film. So if the nigga was, if there was anybody to see a nigga not dropping back far enough, I feel it like would it would be, be Josh McCown. Yeah. <laughs> Tepper has been criticized for micromanaging and getting hands on with football decisions. Prior to the 2019 season, he persuaded then head coach Ron Rivera to switch to a 3 4 defense, which Tepper was familiar with as a former Pittsburgh Steeler minority partner, and drove the team's interest in Deshaun Watson before the quarterback was traded. To Cleveland in 2022. Pause. That doesn't mean a bitch ass thing. I don't give a fuck what you did in <laughs> Pittsburgh. Trust me, Dave Tepper wasn't calling no shots when Mike Tomlin was I, in that bitch. I, I would just at all. So, I swear to God, you would had no say when Mike Tomlin was yeah, in the show. But he was a minority owner. It doesn't. It doesn't matter, nigga. It doesn't matter what kind of owner. I'm a minority stockholder in Apple. <laughs> it doesn't fucking matter. Fuck. That I don't nigga know how to build not, a fucking computer. Nigga is not controlling none of that shit. So that shit is sweet. That shit doesn't mean anything. And you shouldn't even be persuading a defensive coach like Ron Rivera, who had damn near one of the best defenses we've ever seen with our eyes. I'll even go a step further. One of the best defenses in the league fucking bitch-ass history. <laughs> and, and to say that defense that went to a fucking Super Bowl and to persuade the nigga to switch fucking defenses. That don't even make sense in itself, but okay, cool. And when it don't work, fire him. Yeah, I mean, just preposterous. Just outrageous. Tepper's instruction about Young's footwork came after weekly conversations between Tepper and Reich on Young's development and early struggles. League sources said Tepper struggled with the decision to fire Reich, but the combination of Young's difficulty understanding Reich's offense, specifically the reads, timing and ball placement, as well as Young's lack of protection, convinced the owner the organization wasn't helping his quarterback, but ruining him. I think we can all agree with that. We said a couple times that that nigga Bryce Young had looked broken. He looked like he was about to cry two weeks ago in that interview. And that's coming from an unbiased standpoint. Wright's firing came 10 months after he was named the first offensive-minded head coach in Panthers history. At At Wright's introductory news conference, Tepper boasted of Reich's ability to build a top 10 staff that, sh- that quote, should be an absolute standard. End quote. With Tepper supplying the capital, Reich assembled one of the NFL's largest staffs stocked with a pair of former head coaches, Dom Capers and, Je- and Jim Caldwell, uh, two ascending coordinators in Thomas Brown and Edgero Evero, um, and several other well-known assistants. Tepper also encouraged Reich to go outside of his circle with some of the hires. Yeah, because the bitch got too much say in what's going on. Don't tell me how to build my staff. Can we can we pause right there? Yes. I uh, so that in and of itself kind of just tells me like trim the fat. One of the largest coaching staffs in the NFL. Like too many hands in the fucking pot, man. Too many hands in the fucking pot. Too many seasonings on the dish. This shit tastes terrible. Yeah. Time to trim the fucking fat off this bitch. Like, way too many people. You don't need that. Yeah. Like, there's absolutely no fucking need for that. And again, take it back to Dallas, because it's what I know. This is who I follow. We had the same problem last year, and we went this offseason and fired a bunch of fucking coaches. We slimmed down our coaching staff. Yeah, because you, you have to. You know all of them are not telling the players the same exact thing. No, you're getting too many people, too many different directions. One one coach is telling you one thing and another coach is telling you another. Now you're getting fucking confused. You can't even get your technique right because one coach is telling you one technique and another is telling you another. And you got two former fucking head coaches. So I wouldn't be surprised if one of them bitch-ass niggas was behind the back texting, saying this, that, and third. Well, you know, hey, Dave, you know, I'm not saying much, but, you know, if I was the coach, I'm just saying I would yeah. do this, that, and the third instead. I just don't see Frank doing this, that, and the whatever. My thing is it's soft as fuck because why can't, instead of them going to tell the owner, why can't they tell Frank Wright? 
Right. So is he not being receptive or is it just a pissing contest? Like you said, niggas trying to put their name in the fucking basket of, oh, trying to get a fucking job or trying to get some kind of promotion or raise or trying to get some kind of brownie points. If there's a problem like that, you should go to the fucking head coach and address it with him before you go to the owner. But then when you have an owner who's so hands on like Dave Tepper, who's meeting with the coach every fucking week, then, I mean, it's probably the the way that they thought the shit would get to them the best. But either way, it's all dumb as fuck. And this goes back to a conversation we had maybe a month ago when I said all of this quote-unquote collaboration on all of this bullshit-ass offensive playbook was capped the fuck out. That shit is capped, nigga. That shit was not no big-ass collaboration circle jerk like Frank Wright was trying to make it seem. It just simply wasn't. It just simply wasn't. Uh, I'm only going to read a couple more sentences from this shit because it, the, the article is significantly longer than where I'll cut off. But y'all can kind of get the gist of this shit is just damn near like a fucking uh, a soap opera. <laughs> I feel like I'm watching the soaps at my grandmama's house. <laughs> uh. <clears throat> So he encouraged them to go outside of his circle with hires. As such, many of the offensive coaches had never worked together and, and brought different philosophies to an offense that would be led by a rookie quarterback from week one. Like y'all were just speaking about. Too many hands in the fucking pot for a rookie quarterback. Besides the disagreements in scheme, there were personality conflicts and factions formed on the staff that included two main holdovers from rule staff. Offense alum James Kempman, and special teams quarter, uh, coordinator Chris Tabor, both of whom were retained at Tepper's urging. Pause. Again, supporting the fact that James Kempen may have been the one that was being a snitch-ass nigga. Because <laughs> as a special teams coordinator, fuck nigga, don't say shit about what the fuck the quarterback is doing. And Chris Chris Tabor, that's his name? Yeah, that's bro. That's him as well, coach. because we, we said since the firing that it's weird that you pick him out of everybody to slide into that spot. But it would make perfect sense if his bitch ass was feeding information. Yep, so, it would. That's that's very true. Or if he still has some type of allegiance to rural staff for whatever weird fucking reason, which yeah. is the vibe I'm getting. Yeah, yeah and, that's, that, and I can't even say what I want to say right there. <laughs> <laughs> that's blank shit. <laughs> we'll just say it like that I'll just say it like that so I don't get this canceled But if you still got some Weird ass allegiance to a motherfucker That can't even get Six bitch ass wins, wins On fucking uh, the college level you, That's Blank shit <laughs> Simple as that It's bitch shit I'll just say it like that How about that because that'll, that'll be a little bit better and, 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 and you know we won't get canceled if I say it that way So I'm gonna just say it that way Uh after Tepper named Tabor in, interim head coach uh, last week, one of Tabor's first moves was to fire quarterback coach Josh McCow and running backs coach Deuce Staley, who was on Philadelphia staff with Reich in 2017 when the Eagles won the Super Bowl. Staley was still with the Eagles two years later when McCow played for the team. Uh, the 44-year-old McCow logged 17... Uh, we don't give a fuck. Hold on. Let me, let me kind of <laughs> skip through this shit. Uh, some in Carolina thought Reich and McCown weren't tough enough on Young. At the tw- I, I, I agree with that. I'm going to pause right there with that sentence. And I said that shit from the very, very, very beginning. It's funny how the shit that we be talking about on this podcast be coming full circle. And a lot of y'all content creator niggas don't like, a, like giving us our credit, but I know y'all be watching, so cool. I said this shit from the very fucking beginning when they announced Bryce Young as a starting quarterback in fucking May before he took a goddamn uh, training camp rep. Before he took a training camp rep, Bryce Young was anointed the fucking starting quarterback of the Carolina Panthers. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't fall lost upon me, I guess you could say, that they might not have been tough enough on that nigga. That's probably because Dave was like, Nigga, <laughs> we just drafted the nigga number one. <laughs> you back, better back. say something. <laughs> uh, cool. Some, uh, right fitter and the offensive coaches decided the priority before Young's first season was preparing him to call plays in the huddle for the first time and giving him 
uh, time to absorb a playbook that blended right system with wise old concepts Brown brought from the Los Angeles Rams. Any tweaks or changes the Panthers wanted to make to Young's mechanics would wait until the offseason. But Young has been taking a beating. He's been sacked 44 times and on pace to finish with 64, which would be the fourth highest total in NFL history. Some in the organization believed inconsistent depth on his dropbacks was at least part of the issue for the five foot ten quarterback. After Tepper delivered the message to do something about it, McCown began working with Young on his footwork before the Panthers' Week 12 game at Tennessee, three months into the season. Veteran backup quarterback Andy Dalton said Young's dropbacks were among the teaching points during Panthers' uh, Thanksgiving practice, Thanksgiving Week practices. Excuse me. Quote: Footworks are part of playing this game, and it's not changing his footwork. Dalton said, I think it's just an emphasis on just keeping it consistent. I went through it too. On certain throws, you want your footwork to look similar and all that kind of stuff. So I think it's just more of an emphasis on that, end quote. One source said he didn't notice much much change in Young's dropbacks against the Titans, who had four sacks and six hits on Young in a 17-10 loss that dropped the Panthers to a league-worst 1-10. As he left the visitor's locker room in Nashville, a visibly – Irritated, Tepper, Tepper shook his head and yelled, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Wright was gone by the next morning, fired at the NFL's shortest head coach stint since 1978. And for the second time in as many seasons, Wright went 40, 33, and 1 in five seasons in Indianapolis before being let go in November 22. Can we... Yes. Yeah. Um, so. <laughs> and, and really, I, we, we can rap right there. Because, I, I mean, nigga, I can't go on and on. Because this shit is just like the shit that I've been seeing out of this motherfucker has just been crazy. But go ahead and, and uh, say what you would like to say. So, the most experienced NFL starting quarterback of anybody who had any say in Bryce's footwork and dropbacks and everything said that they didn't really see Bryce's dropbacks as a problem per se as just a point of emphasis maybe to work on it a little bit that's kind of like that's kind of what I got from that yes because Andy Dalton has more experience than Frank Wright as an NFL quarterback more experience than Josh McCown starting starting not tenure but starting and better and better yeah better yeah exactly played at a high much higher level than either of them ever did and he doesn't see and he doesn't see it as a problem not because Four of the five offensive linemen are getting fucking beat in less than two seconds. But that's, but blame Bryce's footwork. That's why sometimes these coaches really don't be knowing what the fuck they be talking about, bro. Niggas just be fucking chatting because, I mean, it's just no way. None, none of that shit just makes sense to me. And if it's being, if it's accurate that the offensive line coach has went and said that shit, he's just a whole ass nigga, in my opinion. Just trying to fucking save face. He's he's a whole ass nigga. And when the off season starts, he needs to be one of the first motherfuckers to go. Yeah. I totally agree. And we'll wrap up here. We'll wrap uh with the article here and then I'll just give some more highlights and then we'll we'll close the podcast out. But I damn sure wanted to touch on this. Cause it just so happened that we recorded on Wednesday this week and it was just perfect timing that this juicy ass article came out the same day we recorded. 